start from inside but this is the second start. Ignition on, you can hear the fuel pump. Um, I'll let that run for a minute to prime the carb, give it maybe a little half stab of accelerator. There we go, fast idle. It'll, it'll slow down the idle as it warms up. Lots of uh, oil pressure engine is cold. It only ran for maybe 30 seconds up till now. Okay, so let's go for a drive. Brakes tend to squeak if it hasn't been driven for a while, but it goes away. And then there's that hesitation when it's cold. That's the shift. So the car's warmed up, now we'll take it on the highway. pretty loud with the glass pack and with the gearing it revs pretty high so I just like to keep it at 55. It'll do 70, 75 no problem but it just seems more comfortable at 55. Tracks nice and straight. That's hands off. Drive the Chrysler M6 semi-automatic transmission with fluid drive in this car. Um, so there's a clutch pedal, brake pedal, gas pedal. The clutch pedal, uh, I usually start with the clutch down. That's just habit. You'll, you can start it with the clutch up, and it's in neutral. So this is a warm start. I usually do about half throttle. Starts right up, um, and then I can let the clutch up. Still in neutral. 
So if I wanted to drive off, normally you drive around in the uh, higher range, which is drive. Um, so I would, anytime you move the shifter, you have to have the clutch in. And the shift pattern is straight down for drive, straight up for low, and back towards you and up for reverse. So if I was going to start off, clutch in, pull down into drive. Now the difference between this and a manual, standard manual, is I can let the clutch up now. We're not moving. And the fluid coupling is, that's the fluid drive part, is now uh, allowing the engine to idle while the car's in gear not moving. So I can release the parking brake. And once all the traffic that has suddenly appeared goes by, just once I release the service brakes, the car rolls forward like an automatic. And just step on the gas to accelerate. So then when you get up to about 15 miles per hour, you let off the gas. And that clunk means it's shifted into the higher of the two gears in this range. Now we just get back on the gas and drive like normal. As we slow down for the stop sign, the car will shift back into the lower gear. There it went. So we just keep the clutch up when you're at a stop sign or a stop light. The car idles happily. We drive away again. Upshift now we're in the highest gear. So if I wanted to downshift, I'm at a low enough speed for that, you just floor the throttle. And it's downshifted now, a little bit of belt squeal, the belt's a little too loose. Let off the throttle, upshifts again. So you can force it to downshift by uh, opening the throttle all the way. Yeah, back down to zero, so, or low gear. So now I can shift into the low range by pushing the clutch in, shift all the way up, clutch out. Again, we can sit idling here, and that just operates just like the drive range, but it's a much lower ratio. So now, you can pretty much drive up a wall in, in the low range. It also has a lot of compression braking. It actually only has compression braking in the higher of the two gears in each range. The lower gears each have a uh, overrunning clutch, which is what unloads the drivetrain to allow it to upshift. So there's no compression braking in the lower two gears. If you try to compression brake, the car will just accelerate until it gets to a high enough speed to upshift, and then you'll get compression braking. So reverse works pretty much the same way. Once again, clutch in when you're moving the shifter. If you go straight into reverse from neutral, it will crunch. So I usually go to drive and then to reverse, and then you just treat it the same as a driver, a uh, low gear, except now you go backwards. There's only one gear in reverse. And that's it. That's how the uh, semi-automatic transmission and fluid drive work. Mm-hmm.